Well, dear Heavenly Father, we just, uh, we thank you for all things. We thank you, especially, Lord, as we ask for prayers for those that have passed this week for their families, Heavenly Father, and to give them strength to carry on. It is a battle here. May we remember just what exactly it means to put on your armor um, and, and, and to recognize the characteristics and the attacks of the enemy. So, Lord, before we go any further, I just ask to invite you here tonight by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, dwell within us. We surrender our, our heart, our minds, our thought, Lord, and our will to you, Heavenly Father. Um, sup with us, Lord, tonight as we read your word. Fill us each with your Holy Spirit for your glory, Heavenly Father, for your glory. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. And may it not return to you void, I pray. This is Acts chapter 8, starting with verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Verse 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes, with one accord, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. 7. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, that they were lame or healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, who had before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he that himself was some great one. Verse 10. To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And they heeded him, because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. 13. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which, which were done. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. 19. Saying, give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. 22. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness. Pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages for the Samaritans. So it's 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 almost like um, verse one and verse one and two should be connected to seven, but Saul again was consenting. Um, unto his Stephen's death. 
And that that consenting is is just in common. He was in agreement that this should be done, that this should be carried out. He assented to it, to Stephen's death. And we know that this was the start of that that great persecution. But we also know too, which we've been discussing in this in this book, that this is this is that that fulfillment of the 70th week. This is this is where probation has closed for the Jewish nation, but not for the individuals as we're going to, as we're going to see. <laughs> Especially in chapter eight, when we get Saul himself, right, who's who's turned over. Saul, so who's a murderer. Yeah, who's a murderer, right? Yes. And, you know, I was noticing, I was noticing this too in uh, that they were uh, in Jerusalem and then they went out to Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. And this is, this is a fulfillment of the commission that Jesus said was going to happen in Acts 1.8. You know, he, he prophesied that it was, they were going to stay and remain in Ju Jerusalem and Judea and then go out to Samaria and then to the uttermost parts of the world. And really, this is where all that starts to take place. But this is literally the second, the second level of that, the second part of it, when, when Philip himself goes out to Samaria. And, of course, this is the accompanying power of the Holy Spirit. This is, again, this is that Pentecostal reign that is still continuing to, to come out and, and, and do, the, do the work, really. It's the Holy Spirit that is what's moving, moving them, moving them out to preach with the great power and to do the things that they are doing for sure. In terms of the spirit, the spirit had was working and they were in agreement that the spirit had sent them to do this. Correct. A mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Uh, I'm not sure if you know our sister Lance who teaches our, our basic studies on Friday nights and we've studied extensively under brother craig before but the a sense that has been given if the spirit doesn't send you you go in vain mm. Mm. amen and yeah. and don't expect protection either you <laughs> might get it you might not uh but if the spirit sends you pray about it Know that that's what, for instance, years ago, I decided I wanted to be a missionary somewhere. I decided it. God didn't tell me to do it. Um, fortunately, he made it so that it wouldn't happen because <laughs> it would have been really stupid. I'm 68 years old. And it was only about 10 years ago that he said that. So We all have different levels of understanding mm -hmm. of the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you're correct, Dan, but I also think that there are some of us who maybe don't understand the precise and conciseness involved in that. And I think God can use, um, he's merciful. God is merciful. <laughs> mm. You know, he's yes. also merciful to our going out believing we're filled with the Holy Spirit and, yeah. you know, it's the motive. And and doing what we did boy, today. Yeah, but, well, th well I noticed being filled with the, being filled with the Holy Spirit certainly helps. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that's important. Well, I noticed a long time ago that it works a whole lot better when it's the Lord's idea and I get prompted yeah. to do something than when I get the idea to do it myself, it generally falls on its face. That's exactly what uh, what Sister Lance was saying. Exactly. Yep. Well, for me, it's for me, it's a lot of hit or miss because I have a lot of cognitive problems, and I don't physically and intellectually know a lot of the time whether the promptings I get are from the Holy Spirit or if it's my own idea. So all I can really do is just move forward in faith and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really is said, a lot more you... trial and error. It really is a lot more trial than trial and error than much of anything else. <laughs> well, As the, you Bible, said, go the ahead. Bible says that man makes his plans, but God directs his steps, Indeed. and that's inviting yeah. God into your day. Amen. Amen. Well, the other thing that I learned from Pastor Tim is he said that that things go in um in an ebb and flow, 
and that there's a pattern to things and there's a season for working and then there's a season for resting and learning with the Lord and it goes in and out. And I didn't know that when I was younger. Matter of fact, I only recently learned that. So I would start doing something and the Lord, the Lord was in it and I expected it to keep on going and I couldn't understand mm. when all of a sudden it wasn't working <clears throat> anymore. But I've gotten so that I understand a little more about the ebb and the flow. So it's all a learn. Mm. It's it's all a process of learning. And I mean that was another thing I learned from Pastor Tim is that things are a process. And you know I used to look at it as events. So you know live and live and learn, right? Mm. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Hey, amen. Do you learned it a short time, a while. I just learned it today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see that the, the ones that are being scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria are those being persecuted. Right? Amen. Yeah, mm -hmm. so God's right. actually using the persecution to send them out. Exactly. Exactly. They, they were at risk of just sticking all together in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of a human reasoning strength in numbers. Is that a typology for our time, yes. Craig? Yes. Yes, <laughs> amen. amen. So many times Sister White had to counsel against many people congregating in Battle Creek and Loma Linda and building up big institutions. And we, we really pretty much ignored that advice. Well, we became an institution instead of a movement. Yes. Right. That's right. So. <clears throat> That's okay. That'll get undone shortly, huh, Craig? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Very shortly. Um, I, I didn't want us to go too far without, without looking at verse, verse 2, um, where it speaks that devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. You know, and I always remember what I was what I was told before is is death is winning. Yeah, that it was this 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 act or this part of of this this progression that's going on that that spurred this persecution that got the gospel message out. So through this through this, you know, Satan and and who he controls think that they win by destroying, but no, it's it's giving life. It's giving life, and it was giving life to this movement at this time. Right. Mm. Well, and in the word of um, the, um, I can't think of his name. He says, "Well, if this is of man, it'll, it'll, oh, it'll." The the male, male, thank you. Yeah. It'll yeah. die out of itself. But if not, yeah, you'll find yourself fighting with God. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And that's well, where Saul found himself. Yeah, and that was very prophetic because yes, uh, that's what that's what wound up. Wound up happen for sure. Yeah. That's that's what we read in the great controversy too, where you know the martyrs' blood made for more martyrs, made yeah. for more of a movement. Right. So that uh, um, somebody can remind me where it is, where everything went to the river and it started flowing out. Oh, Ezekiel uh, forty-seven. Forty-seven. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. The ankles to the knees to the waist, and then yep. So, isn't that what Paul meant when he said to to uh, die as gain? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's that's. Yeah. yeah. That certainly could be. If no one's willing to stand up, then we all die. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> I think you were telling me that Ellen White said. Um, uh, what's his name now again? The one that was involved as maybe one of the devout men that carried Stephen. Um, oh, oh no! In uh, well, I know she uh, when she comments on this in the Acts of the Apostles, she spends a lot of time on Nicodemus yes. in this chapter. Mm -hmm. that he, he was really a mainstay and a support to the church, hmm. because we read in our John study right, in nineteen, he was with uh, Joseph of Arimathea, like when they were doing the burial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, with Stephen, with a, how it says in Revelation, blessed are those that die in the Lord from now on, and their deeds shall follow them. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. Stephen's going to get quite the shock when he gets to heaven and finds out what <laughs> an impact the stoning had and about Saul. Um, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, the one that was there became yeah. one of the greatest evangelists yeah, right. of that time. Right, because because his my Stephen's mindset was for your glory. Yeah. Amen. For your glory. Yeah. So definitely an impact. It was a great. And loss. I don't know. I don't know if he'll be so surprised to see Saul there as to go to Jesus's feet and throw his crown down there, knowing yeah, that right. it was his heart's desire that everyone be saved. Yeah. You know when when the the twenty four elders this. Mm. You know, and that's why you know when pil pillars of the church or pillars of the message, you know they, they will come and they will go, but the message, if you're rooted and grounded in Christ, always continues. Yes. It always moves forward to those. Imagine who... how much one needs to love their Lord so that they're so focused on him that they're willing to die to help others. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even conceive of it yet. Yet God promises that he'll finish the work he started. Yeah. Yes, because we'll have his character, right? Because isn't that what Christ did on the cross? Not ca calling ourselves Christ, but our character reaches to that maturity where it's all about him and what 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 he would ha have you do. Yeah. It's very, very, his, very his love manifested in us. Yeah. Yes. I, I see the, all the years I've wasted, all the material things I've wasted. And... Uh, <laughs> I, Ellen White says regret is a useless emotion unless it, it leads is. to repentance. You know, the Lord has that? promised to restore the years that the locusts have eaten. And yeah, if you're right. truly sincere about um, moving on from regret and repining and all the wasted years, and he will bless. Yeah, and not he only that, bless. he tells us that he will quicken us. Yep. Lord, yeah. I believe, help my unbelief. Amen. There you go. <laughs> he, he will quicken us. That is good. We are willing. He is able. Yep. That was Solomon. that one from Brother Craig. Mm -hmm. well, that was Solomon's lamentation, right? All this, everything was useless or whatever he said. Vanity. 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 <laughs> vanity. All is Interesting. Vanity. In uh, verse 3, when, when the King James, it says he made havoc of the church. Yes. You know, that word havoc, it it does have this idea to treat shamefully or with injury or to ravage and devastate and ruin. Mm -hmm. It also means to affix a stigma to or to dishonor, or to spot or defile. Mm -hmm. So really painting, you know, painting them in a bad light in order to be able to mistreat them and get away with it. Yes. But what don't, do you don't we see that happening? You know, <laughs> that's exactly what they did to say, Conrad Vine. <laughs> I was going to say, the next two words says it all, right? Or next three. Havoc of the church. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's so true. And we saw that, you know, with the false witnesses that were being produced and, mm -hmm. and just the depth, the depth of their depravity. Coercion. Literally, you know, using, using the funds, funds of the of the church of god's day to do this too i mean it's it was just yes, it, was heinous. That's right. it was it was just heinous all the way through. and you know what's wild about this even though he had committed them to prison mm -hmm. i'm sure they were still reaching souls there oh yeah yeah <laughs> they have yeah. the testimony of others <laughs> yeah he actually had had many of them killed as well. He, he tells us mm -hmm. later in Acts. We'll get to that. Yes. But, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's that's what tyrants do all the way to this day is they 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 stigmatize you know the ones they want to victimize first mm -hmm. to kind of create a mass psychology willing to to do the things the 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 despicable yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. And we're being primed for that today i mean just just the way yeah. everything is not equality them. but equity, equity. <laughs> and, and the media the media mm -hmm. is you know they they're all they're all on this one one page of you know of of, of putting out these things that uh yeah just call everybody together to believe you believe this you believe this that we can make up anything about anybody yeah. if you all have time 
listen well, to a religious liberty weekend at the village church yes oh yes that's weekend. right is that this weekend it was Last that, the past weekend it's the recordings are up it's powerful oh if somebody wouldn't mind putting a link in the chat that would be nice so yeah so this this havoc this this entering entering of homes and dragging off men and women committing them to prison so as this commission goes out thank you craig for posting that mm -hmm. um so as this commission goes out persecution always invariably goes up in some way shape or form right as the commission you know. went out for the word to go out yes yeah, yeah. the commission of evil yep as good as good moves so does the evil to come yeah. to try to counter it so therefore verse four says um they were scattered abroad and then everyone went preaching everyone went preaching the word so this scattering again and this is it's because the spirit of god is among them that they aren't you know fleeing for their lives like the disciples did when jesus was crucified this is a different group of people this is the people that are that are rooted and grounded in christ and the power of the holy spirit is is there and is is doing battle for them it's doing battle for god's people and like D daniel had said there there's no guarantee right because i think 11 of the 12 disciples faced death and one was exiled right john was exiled so so this uh yeah this was going to happen this was going to happen to them and then it gets to the story of of uh philip so this is this is philip's uh philip's uh really his chapter this is the the book that they, they talked about with philip his calling out yeah yeah his call his yeah. call to go into samaria so he went down to the city of uh, samaria it says and he preached christ among them the same outpouring you know that was laying a seed planting a seed was also maturing the disciples for the work that they had to do so you know in a sense there was a latter rain reception here for some but an early rain reception for others in yeah, this well, I, think, I like the way the bible is written because it's very honest about people and where they're coming from and stuff and so mm -hmm. you you see real people see real people in there and you see their their growth and you see their backsliding and you see their oh, falls yeah. and their repentance and it you know if you look at it closely, it should be giving us hope. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And in here you see the 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 three coming out to the people, right? Which is with the first ones, right? With, which is with the apostles. Then it's with those that they talk about that are scattered. And then you come to Philip and then you have the multitude. So you have those three groups of people that the word is going out to. Yeah, and I think it's uh, more specifically described uh, when Philip uh, meets the eunuch. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, I believe it was. Just to clarify on Philip, uh, I think there were two Philips. There's a Philip sure. who was with Jesus as an apostle, and then there's a Philip who's appointed as one of the seven deacons in Acts chapter 6. Oh, that's true. I'm, I'm not sure if they would have. I don't think Philip the Apostle became Philip the deacon. No. Yeah. know. It's possible, but I don't, I don't think so. I think it's a different Philip. So the Philip in Acts 8 is a different... Is a, I think that's the deacon Philip. This one in 8 is... But I don't... Actually, I guess well, we don't know. I could have well, well, been the actually, Apostle. Well, actually, you do, don't you? Or what's that? Actually, you kind of do because we know that except for the apostles, hmm. the others went out. He went out. He went out okay. to the city of Samaria. So, yes. yes. Okay. And I Amen, that. sister. That's right. Being corrected. Well, praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Very and good. Thank the you. Elders. For that. This is the elders. This is the elders. The deacons. The deacons, <laughs> deacons. were called out. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. this is the apostle. No, this is this this, this is, is the like in, this is the, the deacon, way it's written I think. because the yep. apostles the apostles all stayed in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They don't come on the scene until until this Philip goes to Samaria and he starts baptizing. Then they hear about it and yes. they come out. Yeah, That's they really later. Right? Yeah. 
So, yeah. so in verse in verse six, it says the the people were one accord when Philip was preaching to them. They were one accord because what did he lift up? He lifted up Jesus in verse five. Right. It was it was Jesus, and he preached Christ unto them, and that was that. That's always the way to go, you know. So yeah. <laughs> they were so the people were one accord when they when they heard him and hearing and seeing the miracles which which they uh -huh. did, which is a stark contrast to those that were. <laughs> of one accord that went and stoned Stephen. Mm. So this is a this is a group that is is heeding the word of God. And of course these are the these are the Samar right the Samaria is the Samaritans, right? So isn't this the the ones that are so hated by the Jews and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? You know it's it's kind of neat when you're looking at this of those that were scattered, right? It, it almost gives you the thought of the 144,000 that will be scattered mm -hmm. throughout the world. Yeah, they the won't seed, all be the grouped together scattered. in one place. Yeah. yeah. What was that, yeah. Craig? You got you, you don't put all your seed in one spot in the garden. You got to scatter mm -hmm. your seed. Oh, right. If you want right. an abundant harvest. Amen. 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 So you, sure. you see that and you see the progression of the word, right? <laughs> it's yes. We are living in Acts. Yeah. Well, I mean, this Acts is why I wanted to study. <laughs> this is why I wanted to study Acts is because when I looked at it, I could see the parallels between it and where we're living. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what we will be seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Mm. Yes. Praise God. So uh, it says in verse seven, right? These unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed and palsies and the lame were healed. You know, that takes me back again to seven when those guys went upon, went upon Stephen, they cried with a loud voice. So they were mm -hmm. deemed, they were demonically possessed when they leaped upon oh, Stephen yeah. to stone him. But here are they, these demons, they are, yeah, they are being cast, cast out cast out of many so again you see the workings of, of evil you know to see yeah, if so there's this much there happening it, and they yeah. see the workings of, of of philip and then of course simon comes on the scene but then right. they reason based on the evidence yes yeah they yeah, and it shows that even evidence. someone would even with simon's former beliefs he's converted had a few odd ideas in there about buying the power of the Holy Spirit, but you know, you know, he well, when you always bargain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot he had to get out of them, like like we do yeah. when we first come. Yeah, <laughs> Buy, buying the ideas that we've had, or yeah, and of course, you know, when we go through the Gospels with Christ, you know, one of the places where his message was most well received was was after the woman at the well in Samaria. Oh. Yeah. And, and uh, when yeah. he reached her, she, you know, reached nearly the whole city. And then they all heard for themselves and believed. And so the Samaritans were really, and, and that's where he talked about, you know, the fields being ripe for the harvest. Mm -hmm. Amen. No, I think we're going yeah. to end up finding, you know, even in our day, we're going to end up finding it's it's often going to be non Adventists who are going to be more receptive. Yes. Well, well I they, see that they, now. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't. I have already think, witnessed. Uh, you know, I'm just saying that the people, just like the Jews, they thought they had it all and they knew it all and aren't, haven't us Adventists been raised or trained <laughs> to think that way? And, and then you look at the council to Laodicea, and he's telling Laodicea that they think they're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And he tells them where they're really at. But the people mm. that are outside of the church, a lot of times they see their need. They see their need and um, they're searching more, you know. They're easier to mm. reach. So I have a question. If if we're looking at what's coming with us, we should be we should be growing and being ready to do through the Holy Spirit. 
healings and those kinds of things. We should be seeing those things. No? Maybe. We aren't, we aren't going to be able to do those things of ourselves. When he, when well, no, the Holy Spirit's ready, he will give us the power and he will prompt us to right. do them. We try to do them like some of the two churches I was in before I came into this church. They were trying to do those kind of things on their own volition, and it was not working. Right. But I'm saying, as we are getting closer, yeah. the Bible tells us that we will have visions, see visions, and see these things happening. Right? According to his will. According to his will. Exactly. Yeah. When, it's, when it's needed, it will, he, he yeah, will manifest yeah. the power. Yeah, I mean, we're also told, Sister White does tell us that that Satan will be given permission to work miracles of healing. And so that, that, that you know, God can't use that sign, so, you know, at all times for people right. because there's going to be counterfeits. So, But there will be some who are exercising faith who he will do it for. I mean, that's everyone Jesus healed. He always said, you know, it's your faith that's made you whole. So, right. of course, God, said, God don't, don't then right. no more, lest the worse become upon you, huh? Yeah. And, and I mean, God's not going to use us to you to work a miracle unless we're really sharing the truth. So, because they're going to listen to you if you, God uses you as part of their miraculous healing. So, Amen. You got to be giving the right witness for God to be able to use you that way. Amen. And he's he's already doing that in many ways. I mean, I know plenty of people who've been miraculously healed, and you know, and I know plenty of people who are still suffering and haven't been healed. <laughs> Amen to both. That's his his will. We don't we don't understand God. And I've been on both sides does. of the picture, and sometimes without uh, not knowing why, I was healed one time and not another. Except it, he had a reason for it, you know. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and verse verse eight. Oh, verse eight is a is is a great testimony to it because great joy was in the city. In other words, they, you know, they experienced the blessing of God, and isn't that what God wants to do to mankind? He wants them to bless. He wants to bless us. He wants us to understand that that the blessings do come from Him, and He's. Uh, he wants us to have that joy. But then it goes on, but, but, but. there was a sorcerer named Stephen. Simon. 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 Does Satan Simon. sit by idle as God's moving forward? Yeah. Right. Nope. No, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. So he was the bewitcher of the people using... The sorcery, the magic, <clears throat> lead those to think he was the great one. So, mm. yeah. And they all gave heed. He had them convinced, right? Yeah. And so Philip yeah. came on the scene. That's right. And does, doesn't, doesn't the devil, there are many places that are dark, right? Well, isn't it what they say is this man is the great power of God? Mm. Mm -hmm. Not that they're the power of God is in this man yeah it's interesting right? yeah see the, see, where they it's about him rather than god yes yes yeah. yes yeah absolutely god doesn't let that go does he he says okay philip step up of course the the samaritans are you know a type of uh, the sunday keeping churches you know the, the samaritans have been the 10 tribes that were conquered by Assyria and were scattered throughout the Assyrian realm. And then they took, you know, pagans and settled them in Samaria. And then they interbred. And so they had some beliefs about Jehovah and they had some really, you know, real idolatrous pagan beliefs. But they were waiting for the Messiah. But they were waiting for the Messiah. That's right. They're and they thought, they, thought them, they thought of themselves as worshipers of Jehovah. Yes. That's the, that's the, you know that's the Sunday keeping churches right now. You know exactly. And I think of I think of Jesus saying, "Other oh, sheep I have not that are not of this fold." Yeah. And, and, and doesn't mm -hmm. Satan have ones that he's using to bewitch those Sunday keeping Christians, where they really no. believe that God is with these people? 
but they're not leading them aright according to scripture. Well, let's let's take COVID for an example of those that saw and those that didn't, mm. right? They saw the effects and those that were persecuting whoever uh, on this, all of a sudden they have come out and have seen, well, yeah, this stuff doesn't line up. And I, and I think it's also for the thoughts of people that are in, in churches and that are God's people that are in churches all, all, all around the world, because he says that what will unite them will be truth. And, and they will be his people and they will be his, and we will, and he will be our God. And, and all churches are going to have a coming out all Mm -hmm. And Samaria, mm-hmm. Samaria is having this coming out. Yes. You know? Amen. I mean, I came in from a Sunday keeping church. A lot of you guys came in from Catholic churches. I mean, he's been calling people out for a long time here, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for, uh, age, for ages, he's been calling us out of Babylon, calling us out of Egypt. And trying to get the Babylon out of us. Yeah, my husband and I were called out of... Um, a Sunday keeping church. We went to Metro. Well, first we went to Park Street, which was a Lutheran church, and then we went to Metro Harvest, which is a Pentecostal church. congregational <laughs> church. And then um, in September of 1995, we began attending the Boston Temple on the day when when um, the Greeter at the door boasted a blind Sabbath school teacher who at the time was still a part of the SDA church, isn't anymore, unfortunately, but I have fond memories of when he was, and um, that was our first day at the Boston Temple, yeah. It's Donald Dawes. Yeah. Mm. Donald Mm -hmm. Dawes, yes. The Pentecostal church that we left, we left it that night. Uh, without so much as a buy your leave, we said thank you for your host. When the pastor's wife, who seemed to run things, said, you need to practice your speaking in tongues. Why don't you do it before and in front of a mirror? I said, D, we are yeah. gone. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Audi. I believe my words were like, we're Audi Quattro. That was my exact words. <laughs> Our next stop was the Boston Temple in, in – uh, Audi 1995. Dee <laughs> was baptized mm-hmm. in 96. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Mine was you growing What? Mine was growing ever since. Well, I just wanted to, to read, you know, when we were talking about this <laughs> spiritualism and stuff, and, and just, you know, knowing that that's going to happen in our day as well, too, that First Timothy mm-hmm. 4, verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil, speaking lies and hypocrisy and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So, it's so this this same thing that's happening here is is really a typology you know in every aspect of it uh we're seeing this this happening but you know the these samaritans they believed they believed philip right and what did they believe them in in verse 12 concerning what kingdom of god (laughs) concerning the kingdom of god you know when the holy spirit moves on us he knows when we're ready to hear the truth. <clears throat> and he is the one who quickens our hearts and convicts mm-hmm. us. Yep. And until he does that, we're still not in the land of the living. We are still in uh, on the other side. And I'm just thankful for the fact that, you know, he quickened me and he gave me his truth. Yeah. Somebody was probably praying for you. Nancy. So the Samaritans believed, they believed concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, and they were baptized, both men and women. And this Simon himself, this Simon himself uh, believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Amen. And we can actually see, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead, Craig. Keep. So we can see, you you can believe 
in the kingdom of God and Christ is the king and get baptized and still be really wondering after the beast at the yes. same time. You can. Yes. You, can. You, see, you see that in the heart of Simon. Well, like you, like Sue said earlier, it's a lot easier to come out of Egypt or Babylon than it is to get it out of you. Yeah. He has the, he has the name of the beast. Amen. The, the character so, of the beast. So was Simon, was Simon professing his faith? Yeah, here at the, the outset, yeah. Yeah, he's professing it. He's believing. No, I mean, he's, he sees it happening, and yeah, he wants he wants in on it. But, but before, just, that, he wanted, before he, that, he wanted the power to lay his hands on and give the Holy Ghost. So we offered him money. It's like yeah, I don't know what. but I mean, I mean, before that, he was he was a sorcerer. But did he believe? Well, yeah, this is thirteen that he believed. Not not when he had initially been doing the sorcery to bewitch the people. Okay, okay. That's in in verse that. 13, Cynthia, it says, and Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, so he came right. to believe, you know. Yeah, but my question was, when he first came on the scene, no. he was no. not a Christian. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that Acts 8.13 was not the quickening moment? No. No, we, we, we are, I mean, no. he, he was seemingly accepting them, but he didn't really accept what it means to be a Christian. He just wanted, you know, the cover. Yeah. And not, and not yeah, the, he was on his uh, way. the transformation. Well, I don't wasn't know. It, you know, wasn't, <laughs> this, wasn't this Israel? You know, Israel crossed the Red Sea and, and, you know, they were, they went through this experience with God, but yet they were still not, they were still not convinced. And there was a lot, as Gene said, and as Sue said earlier, there was this, this work that needed to be done in him. Um, well, and the whole, and that's where he was bringing him, but the, yeah. you know, the apostles were bringing him there. They're making him aware. <laughs> okay. Listen, we're going to make you aware of this falsehood that you're thinking of yeah. and because he tells them what he was, what I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Three angels' message is, is, is here. It's right. describing. Yeah. The interesting thing about it was when I was in that first church and the Holy Spirit led me out, that still small voice asked me a very strange question that day because I had seen them laying hands on people and doing powerful things. Okay. And, he, and the Holy Spirit asked me, Do you want power? Or do you want truth? And I thought that was a very strange question because God has both. But if I had to make a choice, I said truth. So he led me out. And I think back and I thought, what if I'd given the wrong answer? Well, he will leave you to your mm -hmm. heart's desire. Yeah, you know, I didn't think it being given over to your own choice then, you know. <clears throat> I didn't realize how important the choice was. I think that um, I think that we're taught very humanly, even in the true church, that I mean, ultimately, I've been taught, yeah, we want truth, but we've been taught that power is the emphasis. You know, we do everything. If we don't see the power, if we don't, if we're not doing everything that Jesus did successfully, if we're not successful in everything we do, that somehow we're not being attended by the Spirit. That's a wrong teaching because and, the, the emphasis yeah, has to because be on truth because Jesus said, I am the, the way Spirit the truth. Does, the Spirit does... Um, give power, but the Lord of truth said that not by strength nor by might, but, but by, by my power, says the Lord, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So, and, and I matched that up with, you know, the spirit, Jesus promised to send the spirit which shall bring us into all truth, according to John sixteen thirty three, And so, you know, and his word is truth, according to John seventeen seventeen. So, I, it seemed that truth would be the emphasis, 
Um, yep. Remember so, what Pilate? Remember what Pilate? <clears throat> we were studying John the other night. What Pilate said to Jesus? He said, "What is truth?" He had the truth standing right before him. But the thing is, is I think where she's coming from is there is belief, and, mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said, "Even the demons believe." But there's yep. belief in the yeah. action, and the action is faith. Right. The, ex the right. exercise of faith. Thank you. The exercise yeah. of faith is the power. Mm -hmm. When you're exercising, right. you're exercising power. Yeah. And but th those two have to come together. Yeah. And as we'll see yeah. here, there's a there's a work that's developing here because because they've been baptized. And as, as we see a few verses forward that they haven't yet received the Holy Ghost, interestingly enough, yes. they received this mm -hmm. baptism. And so uh, Peter, Peter and John are sent, are sent to them and they prayed that they might receive the Holy Ghost. You know, and this, this reminds me too, of maybe this is why this isn't a Philip either. It seems to be an apostolic function. At least I'm seeing is the hands laying on and receiving the Holy Ghost seems like an apostolic function. Whereas mm -hmm. Philip, why didn't Philip do it? If he were one of the apostles, why couldn't he do it? So maybe this is another, another thought as to why it might not be Philip. But just kind of a, kind of a side note on that. Um, and they, they did they did hear philip preach and were baptized yeah. by philip and yet yes. he did, yeah they didn't get the holy ghost that's curious right. yeah mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't it's also a, interesting it, it seems that he was alone i wonder if it was two by two you know it was peter and john who came down later it was two of them together i don't know if that's an issue or not yes and the, yeah and they came by twos right mm hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, you know, when we thinking of uh, Simon the sorcerer here, we he's he of course went on to become sorcerer of Nero. So he, Sister White says that explicitly in, in uh, Spirit of Prophecy, Volume Three. So he really, when he made this offer of money, he was really revealing his true character. He didn't. With 23 shows. Yes, because, I mean, God, you know, any of us could start out in the condition Simon's in, but we see he, he, he you know, history shows us he didn't transform, he didn't change. Yeah. Mm. He, he wanted to be associated with this power, but he didn't want to make the character change to really mm. receive. Right, and, and he asked them to pray to do that so that he could escape the punishment. Yes, <laughs> that's right. It's yeah. like it's like those that 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 repent because they got caught, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Peter tells them, you know, in that he perceives the gall of bitterness and that bond of iniquity. He's he is a poison. He is poisoned and bound by by this this trap that he's in. And whereas he he could have, this is his opportunity to to choose to choose life. It's the three yeah, angels, but he's still three thinking. Message. It's all right. The mind yeah. is still thinking in magical uh, powers. Yes, mind is still thinking. Right, he's thinking power. He's yes, thinking power yes. and how to attain Wait, it. Yeah. Right. So, which is a matter of the mind, right? Yeah. And then he's telling him, surrender that. You need to surrender that, so God can. Yeah, so it's really, that. He's he's under the he's he's under the influence of spiritualism. I mean, he's, yes, he's a channel for spiritualism. Yes, and, you know the word for sorcery here is is uh, magia, where we get magic. It's it's actually different from the sorcery in Revelation eighteen. Mm. Um, they're both demonic, but it's different in its manifestation. Here, so this is true, straight up spiritualism, mm. magic. Yeah, and it's you know in that First Timothy four verse two, I think it is where it talks about their consciences being. Yes. Yeah, so. so so which which makes the difference for for those that that came to believe um, when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Well, Simon himself also believed, right? But he kind of like bypassed that whole 
Jesus Christ thing when when he's right right um whereas those where they saw that they needed to um be prayed over to have the Holy Spirit because they're in their mind in their heart they had believed and that's why they were able to receive the power of the Holy Spirit right and not only that when you go right to 25 Uh, So when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritan. That's how you know it was a worldwide thing at that time. So Simon Simon never got it. Never got what? Well, the last thing we hear about him is, He said, pray that the Lord that none of these things you've spoken of may come upon me. So even though he saw it all, he didn't repent. Because that's that's where I'm left with him, is that he didn't get it. So I'm a magus. Yeah, it says here that he prayed that none of that would come on him, but he didn't pray. For forgiveness, repenting. For forgiveness and repentance, right. He didn't pray for the Holy Spirit or any of that. And I don't know if he shows up again or not. No. And again, Sister White writes and that that he went on to Rome. I think he said he followed maybe followed Paul to Rome and then became sorcerer to Nero. So he was went back to or just continued to keep practicing sorcery. Right. Right. Oh uh, Yes. But we continue that in the church. That's where we pray that it's just a a seed. And this is the, yeah, this is the, it shows you the the contrast of the groups that, you know, that come out, come out of this when you, uh, Mm. you know, when light shines, right? There's a choice that that has to be made. And there are the things of this, this world, you know, that they're talking about power, you know, he mentions power money is mentioned here you know all these these worldly attainments that 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 he was focused on kind of like that rich that rich young ruler right he didn't you know he had great great wealth and great substance he didn't want to give that up either yeah Yeah, it's the it's the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life right it's those things that can grab hold of us even if we don't think it's yeah even if we think it's a little thing it's still can be a great thing because it's yeah it's, it's that wedge well isn't that separating us from well God. isn't that all in nine what you just said and there was yeah. a certain man call yeah astonished practiced claiming yeah uh, by the way it was actually it was actually simon followed peter to rome I'll, I'll read it it's from spirit of prophecy volume three page 436 paragraph two She says, about the time of Paul's second arrest, Peter was also apprehended and thrust into prison. He had made made himself especially obnoxious to the authorities by his zeal and success in exposing the deceptions and defeating the plots of Simon Magus the sorcerer, who had followed him to Rome to oppose and hinder the work of the gospel. Nero was a believer in magic and had patronized Simon. He was therefore greatly incensed against the apostle and was thus prompted to order his arrest. So Simon Magus actually was, played a role in Peter being arrested and ultimately crucified. Mm. Yes. Mm. You see that they, they ultimately are fulfilling the commission here to go after Judea to the Samaritans. Mm-hmm. Right. They went everywhere in Samaria before they went to the outermost parts of the earth yes Mm -hmm. yes and that that will be the yeah next week we'll probably get to that when we talk about philip yeah philip and the eunuch that will be probably next week yeah and it's interesting we'll see that they they sort of seem to know even though i believe they despise the samaritans above everybody else um even more than other Gentiles. Um, and, but they, they sort of knew that they were somehow not fully Gentiles, but sort of close relatives because 
because they had been, it's where the 10 tribes have been from, Samaria. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, when they had the whole dispute about uh, when, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Peter and going uh, amongst the Gentiles and should they preach to the Gentiles at all, mm -hmm. um, they don't say anything about what they did in Samaria. Peter talked about when he went to the centurion, he, he recounts that story, mm -hmm. but that somehow they, they saw a difference. They knew there was something different about the Samaritans from other Gentiles because really they were, and that's interesting that they hated them the most. <laughs> and yeah. that Jesus used that in his little uh, story there about the, uh, yeah. yes, Samaritan. Yep. Samaritan, good Samaritan, yeah. yeah. And then, like you mentioned, the woman at the well. I mean, there was there was Again. seed seed that was planted. Everybody's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, and going to the Samaritans that was really still going after, in a way, going after the lost sheep of Israel, even though mm -hmm. many of them actually were really had pagan. Uh, heritage that had just kind of been mingled with the northern tribes wow i mean it's really it's really a deep thought for us to consider when we're with people um that have that mix of everything mm -hmm. you know mix of what do you mean? There? Well, the, like different churches, um, oh, different ideas, different yeah. everything like that. That, you know, truth, you know, when the kingdom of God is preached. Oh. I mean, that, that, that's what Jesus came to do was to mm -hmm. preach the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is the, he is going to be the unifier. I mean, there's, 40,000 Christian denominations in the world right now. Mm -hmm. There's yes. no, there's no one accord going exactly. on right now. Exactly. Yeah, it's only, it's only by God and, and his outpouring. But there is a coming out. Yeah, there is. There's there going is. to be a great outpouring. It's happening. And we've mm -hmm. seen it. We've seen it with the early church. We've seen mm -hmm. it, you know, in 1844 with the, mm -hmm. with the coming out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. inspiration tells us that the, the largest body of believers in the world is, is among the Sunday keeping Christians. They're, they're, yes. they're mm -hmm. the Protestants. Yes. Well, wasn't it at that faithful. time as well with Israel? He, had, he hadn't found such great faith, no, not in Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Except for, who was it? A true Israelite. There's no guile in him. Ah, Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Yeah. Oh, I think this is prophetically right where we are. <laughs> Very apropos, apropos that we're setting it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. This this transition of the yeah. message needing yeah. to spread, where for the river getting wider yeah. and deeper. Yeah. You know, we're we're gonna go from the ankles to the knees. Amen. And it's a healing river. God, Sister White uh, uses that river also. She, she talks about it being a, a symbol of the gospel of the kingdom message going out, but she also connects it with the work of the, he the health message yeah. because the two go well, together. And do we see that now? Yeah, that's right. And that's, the, that's what's going to reach these groups is the combination yeah. of the truth of the gospel of the kingdom together with the gospel of health. Yes. Amen. Well, let's be circumcised in our heart and our ears. Mm. <laughs> yes. Right. You see, that's right. You see the, the first group that's bringing the message to the next group, the Samaritans, the Judeans bring the message to Caesarians. He's, he does use healings as part of how he convicts them that their message is the true message. Mm -hmm. Is that a typology too? Yes, that's the medical missionary work. Dear Father in heaven, <clears throat> we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. Mm. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you're showing us and teaching us who you are 
and how to stand for you in these times. We thank you for protecting us, watching over us, <clears throat> and teaching us more about you. We ask you, Lord, now as we prepare for the nighttime that you will continue to be with each one of us and those we love and have prayed for, that you will be the Lord of Lords and you will be the one who reigns supreme. We ask you, Lord, to protect our families, our friends, and our loved ones from the enemy, that it will be your will and nothing but yours. So we give you praise and honor. We ask you, Lord, to continue teaching us that we will be ready when your kingdom is ready for us. We thank